1896, Baron de Zoulian, the founder of the Automobile Club of France, was the proud owner of a Peugeot, which was ultimately stolen by his mechanic. Both the car and the mechanic were found shortly afterwards in a town just out of Paris, which isn't overly surprising considering back when this crime occurred, not many people owned cars, very few people knew how to drive them, and the cars themselves were not overly fast. But most importantly, this is the first ever recorded car theft, and ultimately this led to the numerous innovations we see in our modern cars today that have made them way more theft-proof. But cars, however, do not remain idiot-proof. I'm Tori Hodgman, and welcome to the Smooth Criminal Podcast. G'day Groovers, obviously this week our theme is cars and thanks to smooth criminal groupie Mark of Melbourne in Australia for suggesting this week's theme. This topic was epic and I could honestly do 40 more episodes just on cars, so look out for future episodes on smooth criminal. Also if you do have any ideas for a theme or a topic for the show, please send us a message on our Facebook group or leave a note under the podcast or or you can send us an email at smoothcriminalchannel at gmail.com. Also, a huge welcome to all of our new subscribers. It's great to have you here. In Australia, a car is stolen every 10 minutes, with the state of Victoria having the highest number of car thefts and the most commonly stolen car Australia-wide is the Holden Commodore. Pretty much wherever there are cars, there are car thefts. So let's delve into this week's episode with some of the funniest car crimes imaginable. Our first story is from Omaha in Nebraska, where a 17-year-old with the name Maganga Maganga forgot one very important detail when he decided to steal a woman's car. If you can't drive a manual, uh, known as a stick or a stick shift in the USA, probably best you don't try to steal one. Maganga Maganga was armed and he'd gone to extreme lengths to carjack Melissa Peters, who was about to take her son to school. He grabbed the keys and then proceeded to lock himself in the car and then spent nearly seven minutes trying to move the car without any success. Although eyewitnesses said that Maganga Maganga worked out how to use the windshield wipers and also the hazard lights, but when it came to the moving the car, he had no fucking idea. Maganga Maganga eventually fled on foot. Now the exact same thing happened in the same year to a couple of idiots in Houston, Texas, who also tried to steal a car that was a manual. When they realised they had no idea how to drive a manual, they held the owner of the car at gunpoint and demanded he teach them how to drive the car. After he'd given them some handy tips on how to drive a manual, they booted him out of the car, locked it, so while he stood next to the car, he called the police on his phone. When the police arrived, the pair fled the scene on foot, just like Maganga Maganga, because they had no fucking idea how to drive it. They were caught a short time later and ultimately charged and convicted of aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon. Let's head over to South Africa where a car thief was foiled by the car auto lock system which ultimately trapped him inside. Witnesses were highly amused to see the man shouting for help to get out of the car for over an hour and a half and finally the owner of the car returned together with the police who promptly arrested him. What a dick. To Australia and the sweet little town of Jingali, a suburb in the city of Darwin in the Northern Territory where another would-be car thief's plans were foiled by the child safety locks on the doors. This dude was a prolific thief and he was also out on bail at the time of the offence. A member of the public saw him struggling to get out of the car, kindly opened the door to let him out and he tried to take off, but as luck would have it, two cops were walking by at the time who swiftly arrested him. And to Florida in the USA where a woman returned a car she'd stolen from a car yard the previous day because the key fob was broken. (laughs) The dealer asked her to wait in reception while he located a replacement key fob, but he in fact called the cops and she was arrested a short time later. (coughs) Hey guys, did any of you get into Pokemon? I I did for a little while. I must admit it amused me for a little while, but I never got a Pikachu and gave up after a couple of months. So let's go back to 2017, when the Pokemon Go craze was in full swing, to a little story from Baltimore, Maryland. 
A police officer's body cam recorded the moment a completely obsessed Pokemon Go player was searching for Pokemon whilst driving his car and fully distracted he ended up sideswiping a parked police cruiser on the side of the road. Three cops were standing on the footpath near the parked cruiser and the body cam footage then shows the driver getting out of his car with his phone still in his hand and the Pokemon Go app still open. Yeah, in hindsight, it's possibly the Pokemon Go music that made me give up on that app in the first place. Now let's talk about 23-year-old Frank Singleton. This guy had just been released from Palm Beach County Jail in Florida in March 2008 and he'd served time there for a misdemeanor trespassing charge. So it was kind of dumb of him to carjack a woman in the prison parking lot and even dumber, he too couldn't drive a manual car and was unable to flee the scene. This ultimately led to him being arrested and when the cops asked him why he did it, his answer was, I couldn't be bothered walking. In any event, Singleton was promptly thrown straight back into jail for a further six years. And yet another smooth criminal enters our midst, and this time from New York. Now, it's one thing to impersonate a police officer, but it's entirely another matter to impersonate a police officer, attempt to pull over a van, only to discover that it's full of police detectives. And that's exactly what 25-year-old man Valerie Portlock did earlier this year. So here we've got Portlock cruising through the Long Island town of Hicksville. I shit you not, it was Hicksville. And he activated emergency lights and sounded an air horn while he tried to pull over the van. As soon as the occupants of the van, who were members of the Nassau County Police Department's electronics squad, jumped out of the van, Portlock took off. He was later arrested and charged with criminal impersonation, reckless endangerment and fleeing the police. Surely only one person would be dumb enough to try that, I hear you say. But no, my friends, you're wrong. Anthony Kenneth Mastro Giovanni pulled over a car for speeding even though he wasn't a cop. Mastro Giovanni's big mistake? The car he pulled over was being driven by a real cop who promptly arrested him for impersonating a police officer. Another really weird thing I found while I was researching this topic is that heaps of people who steal cars have some weird need to put the stolen cars right under the cops' noses. And I don't think it's deliberate. I think these people are genuinely stupid. For example, the smooth criminal in Washington State in the USA who stole a laser red Audi S4. Now, how was he caught? because he drove it to and parked it at a police station. He'd gone there to pick up some belongings of his that were there due to a completely different incident where he'd been arrested. There was also the unlicensed driver who just got out of prison after doing time for dangerous driving, who proceeded to drive himself to a probation appointment in a stolen car that he parked illegally in a taxi rank. What about the two dickheads who stole a car which led to a police chase? After speeding for some time, the driver crashed into a roundabout and the pair fled before the police arrived at the scene. Now, these dolts were walking on foot back toward the nearby village where they lived and eventually bumped into two police officers and asked if they could get a lift back to the village. And an officer from the Leicestershire Roads Policing Unit took to Twitter to describe the two men as the most stupid of fugitives. Many people also steal cars simply to go on joy rides, but this next story has to be one of the most epic joy rides of all time. In Australia, four children, I'll let that sink in, four children drove 966 kilometres, which is 600 miles. They drove 966 kilometres across Australia after stealing their parents' car. There were three boys, one was age 14 and there were two 13-year-olds and a girl aged 10 and they stole 82 litres of diesel before being stopped by the police which brought their unbelievable road trip to an end. The kids had set out from Rockhampton in Queensland after one of the boys left a note to the family which simply said they were leaving home. 
But it was when the kids stole the diesel from the Puma service station in the small township of Banana. Yeah, the town of Banana exists and its small but proud population of 337 residents will confirm it's real if you don't believe me. But the petrol station cashier reviewed the CCTV footage and noticed that the fuel thief was very short, adding, look, he barely even reaches the window. So with all the information from the CCTV footage, police eventually spotted the stolen car and after a very short car chase, the kids gave up, but they locked the doors and refused to get out when the police approached them. Eventually though, they did get out of the car and the police waited for the parents to arrive before interviewing the kids about their epic joy ride. And since we're on the topic of bananas, is anyone else having flashbacks of episode one of the podcast? A state trooper in Kalamazoo, Michigan, was more than surprised when he spotted a Ford pickup truck that had been decked out to look like a 23-foot-long giant banana simply cruising down the road. The trooper pulled the banana mobile over to discover the driver, Steve Braithwaite, happily and proudly sitting behind the wheel. Braithwaite hadn't been speeding or doing anything illegal. The trooper just wanted to pull him over to make sure the banana mobile was roadworthy and it did in fact check out. So it turns out this fruity vehicle had been hand-built by Mr Braithwaite who travelled across the US giving rides to kids and appearing at fairs all to raise money for charity. Braithwaite also told the state trooper that the banana car had made it into the Guinness World Records as the longest custom banana car in the world. But I might add, because it's the only banana car in the world, it would also be the world's shortest. And the trooper was further amused when Braithwaite finally drove off doing precisely what the license plate said. Split. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the latest episode of Smooth Criminal. And once again, welcome to all of our new subscribers. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, CastBox, the Smooth Criminal Podcast channel on YouTube, or even through our website at shows.acast.com forward slash smooth criminal. Please rate and review and share with your friends. And thanks again to Smooth Criminal Groupie Mark for this week's suggestion. If, like Mark, you have an idea of a theme for a future show, you can send us a message on Facebook or pop a comment under the episode you've just listened to Or for old-fashioned people, why not email us at smoothcriminalchannel at gmail.com. So that's it for another week. And remember, Groovers, don't get hit by, don't get struck by a smooth criminal. (laughs) 